All right, this video we're going to look at finding uh, the x and y intercepts for a parabola. And I've got six problems here, and you can see the first three problems are in one form, and the last three are in a different form. So these three here I'll do in video number one, and then I'll make a separate video for these three. So you can check those out. All right, so let's go ahead and find the x and y intercepts and and just uh, just real quick if you have a parabola okay here's the x-intercepts that's where the graph crosses the x-axis and here's your y-intercept that's where the graph crosses the y-axis so <clears throat> to find the x-intercept and we'll find it for the first problem. All right. So to find the x-intercept, basically what you do is you set the function equal to zero and solve for x. So that's to find the x-intercept. So for the x-intercept, we're going to take x minus 3 squared minus 9 and set it equal to zero. Now, to solve this, what you need to remember is the square root property. Remember, if you have x squared equals some number k, then x is equal to plus or minus the square root of k. So, what we have here, we've got the x minus 3 squared minus 9. Okay? So, the x minus 3 is acting like the x here. Okay? And the 9, that's going to be our k because we're going to move the 9 to the other side of the equal sign. All right, so to solve this, I'm going to add 9 to both sides. So that's going to give me x minus 3 squared equals 9. And then I'll apply that square root property. So that's going to give me x minus 3 equals plus or minus the square root of 9 and the square root of 9 is 3 okay all right now we have to add 3 to both sides and so that's going to give me x equals this 3 here plus this 3 or x equals this 3 here minus this 3. And so I get x equals 3 plus 3 is 6 or x equals and 3 minus 3 is 0. So what we've done is we found the x coordinate. So our x intercepts that's the point 6 that's our x. Well what did we let y equal? Well remember this is your, that's like y. Remember, f of x and y, that's the same thing. Well, here's our function here, right here, and that equals what? Zero. So you can see this part we changed to zero, so that means our y coordinate is zero. And our other x intercept, well, the x coordinate is zero, and our y coordinate, just like here, is zero. So this is the x and y intercepts. <clears throat> now let's find the y intercept. I mean we've actually we've already found it because we got this point zero zero. We're basically going to get the same point here. We're going to get zero zero. Okay. Alright. But let me show you. Let's just go ahead and do it. Alright. <clears throat> So to find the y-intercept, you evaluate the function at x equals 0. So I've got f of 0 is equal to, and I'm going to plug 0 in for x, so that's going to be 0 minus 3 squared minus 9. And so this is going to give me, well, 0 minus 3, that's negative 3 squared minus 9, which is equal to negative 3 squared is 9 minus 9 which equals 
zero. And you can see that our y-intercept, well, what did we let x be? See, in the place of x, we put zero. And what did we get for y? We got zero. And so these are your x and y-intercepts. All right, so let's look at the next one. I'm going to pause while I'll erase it. All right, so let's look at the second problem. All right, so first let's find the x-intercept. All right, so we're going to take the function, set it equal to 0, so 2 times x plus 3 squared plus 8 equals 0. All right, so I'm going to solve this. I'm going to use that square root property. So I've got to get, I've got to get this by itself on one side of the equal sign. So I can apply the square root property. All right. So I'm going to subtract eight to both sides. So that's going to give me two times x plus three squared equals negative eight. And then I'll divide both sides by two. And that's going to give me x plus 2 squared equals negative 4. I'm sorry, not x plus 2, x plus 3 squared. All right. And then I apply the square root property. So that's x plus 3 equals plus or minus the square root of negative 4. Okay. So this is x plus 3 equals plus or minus, and then remember the square root of negative 4 is what? 2i. All right. So what, what's happened here is we got an imaginary solution. So what that means is there's no x-intercept. Okay. And, and let me show you what we've got here. Okay. In, the, in, a, in some other videos I have, I go over how to find the vertex. Well, the vertex here is negative 3, 8 for this problem. And if we plot that, if we go over negative 3 and up 8, I know that's probably not that accurate, but you get the idea where the vertex would be somewhere around here. Well, remember, the number in front of the squared part's positive, so that means the parabola is going to open up. So that means that parabola is going to look something like this. And I know this is just a rough sketch of it. But you can see that there's no x-intercept. And that's why we get this imaginary solution here. In order for this to have a x-intercept, this thing would have to open down. Okay? And that just doesn't happen. All right? So that's, that, that's another way you can confirm if you get an Im imaginary solution. You can just sketch that graph real quick and determine which way it opens and see if it does actually cross the x-axis. You can check your solution real quick like that. All right, so now let's find the y-intercept. All right, so remember to find the y-intercept, we just evaluate the function at 0. So I'm plugging 0 into here. So that's 2 times 0 plus 3 squared plus 8. All right. And so this is going to be 2 times, and this is 0 plus 3 is 3. And 3 squared is 9 plus 8. And so this is going to give me 18 plus 8, which is 26. So our y-intercept, well, our x-coordinate is 0, and our y-coordinate is 26. And so there's the y-intercept. We have no x-intercepts. Okay. All right, so let's do the next one. All right, so here we go with this one. All right, so I've got, I've got f of x is equal to 3 times x minus 2 squared minus 5. So first, let's find the x-intercept. So I'm going to take the 3 times x minus 2 squared minus 5 equals 0. And once again, I've got to get this by itself. So I'm going to add 5. So that's going to give me 3 times x minus 2 squared 
equals 5. Divide both sides by 3. And so I'm going to get x minus 2 squared equals 5 thirds. And then I'll use the square root property. So I get x minus 2 equals plus or minus the square root of 5 thirds. Alright, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to simplify this radical before I add the 2, move the 2 over to the right hand side. So this is going to give me x minus 2 equals plus or minus the square root of 5 over square root of 3. I'll split this up. Remember you can't have a fraction under the radical and you can't have a radical in the denominator. So now I need to rationalize the denominator. So I'm going to multiply numerator and denominator by square root of 3. And so that's going to give me x minus 2 equals plus or minus. And square root of 5 times square root of 3 is square root of 15 over. And then square root of 3 times square root of 3 is square root of 9. And the square root of 9 is 3. <clears throat> now I can add the 2 to both sides. And so that's going to give me x equals 2 plus or minus square root of 15 over 3. All right. Now, <clears throat> let's look at this. I don't know what your teacher is going to make you do, but you could leave it like this and write it as x equals 2 plus the square root of 15 over 3 or x equals 2 minus square root of 15 over 3. All right, so that's how you could split that up and then your x-intercepts would be 2 plus square root of 15 over 3. That's the x-coordinate and then the y-coordinate 0 and your other x-intercept would be 2 minus square root of 15 over 3 and then your y-coordinate is zero. So, you know, this is an acceptable answer, but I know how sometimes your teacher gets picky. Let me, let's just take this and we can combine, well, let's take this and, well, we'll do this one. So I've got 2 plus square root of 15 over 3. If your teacher wants you to get a common denominator and combine these, this is how you're going to do it. So we'll get a common denominator of 3. So if this is over 1, so 3 times 1 gives me the common denominator, so I've got to multiply 3 to the numerator, so that's 6. And this will stay square root of 15, because that's a 3, this is a 3. And so this would be 6 plus square root of 15 over 3. Okay, And likewise, if you did this one, that would be 6 minus square root of 15 over 3. So the other way that you would write it, there's your x-coordinate, there's your y-coordinate, and then the other one would be 6 minus square root of 15 over 3, 0. So, I don't know, depending on what your teacher wants, they may let you leave it like this, or they may want you to go to this. I don't know, but you know how to do them both now. Alright, and then we've got to find the y-intercept. Alright. So I'm going to evaluate the function at 0. So that's 3 times 0 minus 2 squared minus 5. <clears throat> and so that's going to be 3 times, well, 0 minus 2 is negative 2. Negative 2 squared is 4 minus 5. And so that's going to be what? 12 minus 5, which equals 7. And so our y-intercept, the x-coordinate is 0, the y-coordinate is 7, and so there's your y-intercept. And I hope the video helped. Check out the other videos, and, and check this video, this video out, video number 2. I'll do these in a separate video by themselves. Hope this helped. Give me a like, share, and subscribe, and thanks for watching.